Hi guys and welcome back to the channel straight from the field. I'm out here on this beautiful mangrove boardwalk looking for some fly catchers and some yellow robins. I also want to explore the question is the f7.1 aperture on the 100 to 500 lens really unusable in dark conditions like this or is it just a little bit overblown because all comments always suggest this lens is overpriced and f7.1 is basically unusable. So let's find out if that's really the case. I've already seen the first few birds. I've just spotted a shining flycatcher, a bird I've never photographed before, so I'm pretty excited. And at the moment, it's still very dark. So f7.1 is definitely not ideal. I wish I had an f4 lens because I'm at ISO 12,800, 200 of a second. Not great, but at the same time, I also have a lot of flexibility. You might ask, why am I not using my big f4 600 millimeter lens on this tiny boardwalk? First of all, I can't really handhold it because even at a wider aperture, I would still have a very low shutter speed and then handholding that lens for extended periods of time would be quite difficult. Also on this boardwalk, it's hard to put a tripod down and there's a lot of shake from walking on the boardwalk. So if I put a tripod down, I get shake in the lens, but also I'm very inflexible. The flycatcher is far from the left to the right, the robins sit here and there, all in different spots. So unless I could set up in one spot and wait for the birds, having a big 600 millimeter lens, I might be too inflexible because the bird might be on the right and then on the left. And if I, by the time I've turned the big lens around, the bird will already be gone. And I'm also a lot more obvious for the bird. So having this small package is actually something that I really value, even though it's a slight challenge, at least while it's as dark as now. And there's one tip for you that I have, if you're in dark conditions shooting at high ISOs, always try to position yourself in a position where you have a light background behind the bird because light backgrounds don't show the noise. If you have a dark green, dark brown background, that will be very noisy. But if I look around, find a spot with like a brown tree trunk behind the bird or some nice bright leaves, it will be much easier to deal with these really high ISO settings. So that's what I'm gonna do now. I'm gonna see if I can find that shining flycatcher again see if it sits somewhere near the boardwalk and then see if I can get a nice background behind it. Beautiful on an open branch. I'm actually getting some cool shots and there's a little bit of sun coming through, which actually looks quite nice in my background. I think I will be quite happy with this photo. And there we have our first pale yellow robin. Beautiful on that little tree. Wow, look at that. So I'm already getting some really nice shots. Light is still low, but I'm just loving the flexibility of this tiny and light lens. Currently shooting between 12,800, 16,000 ISO, but I'm confident that those files will clean up later when I edit them. Just awesome, beautiful morning, fantastic birds. I'm really enjoying myself. And to be honest, lately I've enjoyed carrying around just a little zoom lens, simply because I'm more flexible and I just enjoy myself more and I can take great handheld video. Would I prefer this lens to be f4? Of course. Would I want to trade in this size or weight for an f4 lens? No, because then I lose all the advantages that this lens has. So there's always trade-offs in life, isn't there? In this case, we have a relatively high price, but we get amazing image quality, a small size, amazing image stabilization in this overall nice lightweight package. So to me, it is very close to the perfect lens. The f7.1, even today, is definitely a challenge and it will force you to use high ISOs. And I'm happy to use DX or Pure Raw, for instance, to get rid of the noise because the R5 handles this noise very well. ISO 16,000 cleans up quite well and I still get some really nice images. Of course, it would be nicer to shoot at ISO 400, but let's be honest, in this really dark condition, if you had an f4 lens, you'd still be at ISO 6400 around that. So it's not like with an f4 lens, you'd be shooting at really low ISO. And the other thing I always read in the comments, this lens should have been at least f6.3. Let's be honest, guys. The difference between f6.3 and f7.1, you probably don't even notice in the field. You'll notice that this lens is a bit smaller because it's f7.1 and it has a 72 millimeter filter mount, but the difference in the field when you're actually shooting between f6.3 and 7.1 which is one third of a stop is literally one little click 
on this wheel or you might not even notice because the f-stop is not the same as the t-stop the t-stop actually measures how much light comes to the sensor whereas the f-stop is arbitrarily assigned by camera companies so you can't even be sure that the f7.1 is darker than a 6.3 lens because you don't actually know the t-stop of these lenses so the f7.1 on this lens while annoying is actually not a deal breaker there's another yellow robin beautiful on that branch again oh look at that just following this female leaden fly catcher around now there she is the sun is popping in and out now as well so i have to change my settings a lot it's much brighter now the sun sometimes pokes through so i'm at much lower iso still wide open because there's really no point stopping down on the 100 to 500 iso 1600 and between the 500 and the 2500 of a second as my shutter speed i've never had a fly catcher do that it's just out in the open eating insects right in front of me in all these open branches i'm getting some great photos and videos You might ask yourself, how is it possible that Jan is just out here on a boardwalk and gets cool images? And I think part of it is my approach that's quite different to what other people do. I waste no time. I don't take safety shots. I don't go slow. I approach the bird pretty directly. I don't look at it, but I go towards it very quickly into a position where I think I would get a good image, get my camera up and shoot. And more often than not, I get the shot. What I always find with the slow approach, a zigzag approach and safety shots, by the time you're actually in a good position to take a photo, the bird's long gone. So I like to kind of go for it and either the bird stays or flies away. But if it stays, I get some epic images rather than just getting a few distant shots. You wouldn't believe what just happened. I'm walking around, there's suddenly these three dusky honey eaters landing right in front of me probably only a meter away fighting and calling so i wrap up the camera thinking i probably can't focus but with the 100 to 500 i could actually still focus and get a headshot of a tiny tiny bird that's only like the size of my finger pretty much if i'd had a big 600 millimeter prime lens with four and a half meters minimum focusing distance i wouldn't have got any shots but with this one even when the bird's just one meter away i was able to get a pretty cool headshot just made my way down to the edge of the mangroves. It's a little bit brighter, but I'm still using ISO 10,000. But there's this beautiful male shining flycatcher hopping through these low branches. They're actually really nice natural perches and he's feeding on these mud flats. So hopefully I can get some more shots. There he is again. Wow, look at that. One important aspect with this kind of walk around bird photography is that you position yourself well in the field. Because with a lens like the 100 to 500, it's harder to get nice and smooth background. So I have to look around whenever I see a bird, make sure that I go up or down or move around a little bit until I find a nice sort of more distant background behind the bird because it will look much better. Personally, I also then like to make sure that that background is actually fairly bright because a bright background looks more pleasant to my eye, make the bird more stand out, and it also shows less of the noise that we sometimes have to deal with. So a distant, bright background is always what I'm trying to get behind the bird. Looks like I'm running out of luck slowly. There's a lot of airplanes ruining the sound. I haven't seen a bird for a little while, but I think we got some nice videos and photos with this combo. I'm gonna head home now. I'm gonna use Fast on Image Viewer to sort through all my images tag the ones I want to keep and delete the rest. Then I load them all in DxO Pure Raw to get rid of the noise. And then I will open them in Photoshop, apply my process to get my raw files with just one click to a great starting point with great colors. And then I use my editing workflow that I teach you in my master class to get the images to a great looking final result. Because some of these images can be a little dark, a little noisy, but with the right editing techniques, you will get them looking amazing. So if that's of interest to you, you can also check out my process and master class down there in the description. All in all, I think this combo has performed really well. The f7.1 is obviously a challenge, but then again, the difference between f7.1 and like 5.6 or 6.3 is just very marginal and it's just a third of a stop. So I think this lens is more than usable in the field and gives me great results because it is so small and so flexible. I can do handheld video, shoot at low shutter speeds, especially with the electronic shutter on the R5 because that gives me the most sharp images. And if you're looking for a nice 
further distant backgrounds that are a bright color, the higher noise levels will also not be a problem at all. And then as you saw in the editing process, you will also get fantastic results. So to me, this lens is really not overrated. In fact, it's probably underrated because of the f7.1. And to me personally, it has become my favorite lens. I use it more than my 600 millimeter lens now because I'm just so flexible. It's so nice and light and it has fantastic image quality. So it, why don't you guys let me know in the comments, what are your thoughts on this lens? Is it overpriced and not wide open enough? Or is it a great lens? Make sure to let me know. Also give me a thumbs up for this video and subscribe to the channel down there. I'll see you in the next video and hopefully I can find some more birds on the way home.